Fort Philippe Chatrier, Andre Agassi, the number four seed. Another one of those matches where he must wonder where time has gone. As he looks across the net and sees yet another outstanding young player, a junior phenom and Tommy Robredo from Spain. Who's already tired, by the way. So <laughs> that shows you the age thing. That yeah. doesn't mean a whole lot when you play Agassi. Andre's been running Robredo around the court. Andre just breaking at two all. Thirty-two now. Thirty-two. It's still ticking. Going Looks strong. Looks great. Yep. Enjoying fatherhood. Coming back off a of wrist injury, wrist surgery. Oh! Withdrew just before the Australian Open started this year to Agassi. Came back to the tour in late February. learned to play rather well at net, but Robredo's uh, going to give it everything he's got here. This is the biggest match of this guy's career, without question. This could put him in the big time. A couple years ago, Robredo was the number one junior guy by the name of Roddick, was number right. two. And a lot is expected from this guy in Spain. <laughs> Too bad these young guys don't hit the ball well, hard. Don't they sit there looking at this guy, John. Tommy Robredo, they list him at 5'11", 154, yeah, and he has a punishing forehand. A lot of it is these rackets that they use, in which it's not only helped the server, but it's helped guys like Robredo, not dominating physically, to hit a big ball from the baseline, oh, hit winners. And Robredo's forehand a great weapon his serve not so, so great his serve is so so I mean he, he can play at net he's grew up where Saffron grew up in that uh, was it Valencia about 90 minutes north of Barcelona right Robredo grew up playing on a hard court where I was that. told there were only hard courts now that's unusual in Spain That's where you Hell see no. how much he respects Agassi because he should not have gone for a winner on that shot, yet he's pressing. He had a break point, chance to get back in the set. Instead, he gives Agassi that point. It's amazing, at 32, the guy looks like he's on a mission again. He's so focused. This is Andre Agassi we're mm -hmm. talking about. Now it's become expected. He's very consistent. You know, John, you look at Andre, you think back to last year. The last three Grand Slams he played ended kind of distasteful away from him. The, the match you talked about with Grosjean earlier, where he seemed like he had that match in command. 26 and 3 since coming back this year off the wrist surgery. But that was a fall part. Then he plays a marvelous semifinal of Wimbledon against Rafter for the second straight year, loses in the fifth set. And then we yeah, last saw him at the U.S. Open in a spectacular match against Sampras. But again, Andre came out at the short end. All three of those matches, he was playing I very, very high-level tennis, though. Mm -hmm. He right. did lose it when Clinton showed up. Why, I don't know. Only right. he knows the answer there. But Grosjean is a tricky customer on this mm -hmm. surface with this crowd. And you're talking about two absolutely tremendous right. matches. There's his wife now, Steffi. And the boy not in sight. Is he hitting? Is he hitting balls already? Or is he, oh, is he six months old? He probably hang off the. He probably can top he, of the bassinet. He, he, he right? probably can hit the ball already. Yeah. There will never be a, a baby born in this universe that will have better tennis genes than Andre and Steffi's baby. That, that I think that's impossible. Mm -hmm. You say that's impossible to top probably be a serve volleyer though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he switched hands. There's a crowd just applauding just because Agassi is just getting it done, and he's making this guy run mm -hmm. way more than he's... He is. He's way behind the baseline. This is typical of an Agassi match. He's standing around the baseline, dictating play, taking what seem to be tough balls and hitting them back routinely. You know Andre pretty well, John. I think he likes the challenge of taking the young and up-and-coming kid and teaching him a little bit. Yes, he does. Yeah. Like another guy by the name of Connors. They're, he hates when they say we're, they're cut from the same cloth. But Andre's a bigger, stronger version of Connors. Love to give this guy a lesson. And he's already mentally thrown in his first set for the most part. He just he looks like he's not there right now, Robredo. Robredo just turned 20, the first of May. I mean, he looks fatigued. And we've played, what, he's, we've, uh, Andre's mm -hmm. been out there 24 minutes. That's the first time in this set that he's gone for too much. Just got a little anxious there. He knows he has another break point. I suspect he'll make Robredo work a whole lot harder at this point. And there's the break. So Andre Agassi will come back and serve for the first set. Andre Agassi, twice a finalist here in his early years, his years with hair. And, of course, the champion here in 1999. Here's how he got ready You're for the French Open talk. this year. Okay. Exactly. And neither am I. <laughs> Three championships this year for Agassi, a final and actually a spectacular match that he lost to Leighton Hewitt in San Jose on the tournament when Andre returned from his wrist surgery. Do Talking you, about uh, giving young guys a lesson, John, that San Jose tournament, the semifinal match, he played Roddick. First tournament back for Agassi, beat Roddick 3-1. and one. Speaking of giving lessons, mm -hmm. when are we going to go for the shave look? I mean, I, don't, I guess we don't have the guts for it. I, I know I don't. <laughs> my, I hear you. My kids have said they'd abandon me. <laughs> See, that shot, the previous one, he takes it up at the baseline, just scoops it up deep. That infuriates clay court players. Because they're sitting there thinking, hey, I've hit a deep ball, and mm -hmm. I'm going to get back on the offensive. And Agassi just steadfastly stands at that baseline, doesn't give in. There's Robredo with some volume ability. He doesn't have the bounce. I mean, he's going to have to change his attitude here. And this first set is gone. He's going to have to get himself into this match mentally if he has any chance of winning. And the good news is best of five, so he has time. See the wind's kicking up too, and I guess he's obviously playing with the wind here. And he's has plenty of time. That ball just floated, just sat there. We've talked about this many times. Would you say he's about as good a player in the wind as you've seen? He's a great wind player growing up in Vegas. He had to deal with that quite often. And he's also an excellent front. which was what made his match here against Grosjean last year even more shocking in the quarters, because he was ahead. He won the first set easily. I believe he won the first game in the second, mm -hmm. a break, and then suddenly ex-president Clinton came, and Andre got miffed. There was a distraction. They stopped play for a couple minutes. That's immaturity there. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter in a sense because he's down 5-2, but there's a lot of wins, so that makes it even more difficult to hit that shot. And he's trying to go for an outright winner. Set point. Yeah. 
And so if the young Spaniard is to challenge Agassi, he'll have to come in a longer match. Only 29 minutes for Andre Agassi to take the first set. Andre Agassi taking the first set here at Fort Philippe Chatrier. Very easily over Tommy Robredo. Agassi needing less than 30 minutes. And Robredo named for the famous rock opera written by Pete Townsend over 30 years ago. The Who's Tommy, which definitely elevates Mr. Robredo in my book. Or his parents. Right? Yes, Mr. Robredo. <laughs> oh, Mr. Robredo, yeah. Back I'm, a little, I'm a little slow here. Yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> his dad was his coach, by the way, but was a huge fan of The Who and named his son for the rock opera. The Who, big in Spain. Fantasero. Interestingly, Robredo and Roddick, as you mentioned, were junior rivals. They met last year at the U.S. Open. Roddick beat Robredo on the hard courts in straight sets. They played in the Davis Cup match recently in Houston on grass. And Roddick beat Robredo again. And so this match today, that was, were probably the two biggest matches of Robredo's career, which he came up short in. And he's going to have a tough time here as well. At least he's getting off to a good start. He does hold his serve. And looking at the first set stats, it's interesting that Andre Agassi takes the first set easily and hits one winner. This is an example of stats that mean absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. right? Because if you look at this, Robredo's gotten two out of three serves in Agassi, less than half, one winner to eight, and yet it was Agassi who dominated. Unforced errors, Robredo, but that's Agassi putting a lot of pressure on him and him pressing. But since Gatorade was so kind <laughs> enough to supply us with so much of their fluids to show those stats, we must show them. Do you ever look at a stat sheet ever in your career? during a match, Ted, or do you mean after? No, after a match. Uh, very rarely, but the yeah, first time it ever happened to me during was in a Davis Cup match with Arthur Ashe, who would not say anything to me on the changeovers mm. at all. I mean, we're talking entire matches, except he would be looking at those stat sheets, and I say, Arthur, please, just put those down, okay? We don't need that. So Arthur did. He believed and, in that. Well, he, he, either that or he just mm. was coming up with something so he didn't have to speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's more problem. We should also mention that here in uh, Roland Garros, we're oh, without our longtime statistician, Leo Levin. We think Leo made up a convenient excuse, like lifting luggage and hurting your wrist, just so he could stay <laughs> home and spend time with his family in Florida. But we want to wish Leo well. He's also, Leo's also fed up with you and I saying stats don't mean anything, Ted. Every time we do that, 
Bill Mitchell is working with us this year, doing a great job. Keeps shooting us the look. Agassi. So Agassi holds for Agassi one all. Passes. Second set. Got up in Paris this morning. We were able to oh. watch the thrilling end of game six. The Lakers survived at home. What was the score? I don't know, but it was close. It came down to the final minute. And tomorrow night here on NBC, game seven in Sacramento, which should be a great What about the sight. Nets and Celtics? Dude? And the Nets are in the Nets the are in. Incredible turnaround. Awaiting the Lakers-Kings winner. You'll see game seven tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, right here on NBC. The after our second day of coverage here in Paris. These wonderful reminders we get, John, of how small the world has become when you wake up at 8 in the morning on Saturday in Paris, turn the TV on in the hotel room, and there's the end of the Lakers-Kings game, which the Lakers won 106 to 102. One of the few times now that you see Agassi get a little lazy, just his feet got planted. It was almost too easy. Ubredo's taking some extra time here because he's run an awful lot these first couple points. A typical Agassi match. There's nowhere to, no way to prepare for it. I don't care how long you practice. You get in a situation like this. And Robredo talks about himself that his legs are his strength. He obviously you can see there he's not got a huge build. He doesn't have the muscle that you'll see in other players. Well, Kirton doesn't either. Right. He, can, he can run all day. If they'd only get these shorts a little bit shorter, you might be able to see those big quads he's got. But they're all down to the knees nowadays. Huh? It's just long for the old days, Ted. I always knew you were a leg man. <laughs> Elva Bredo is, among other things, ever <laughs> on serve, starting the second set. Yesterday here in Paris, Place des Mousquetaires, right on the grounds here at Roland Garros, was about 2 in the afternoon. You couldn't move out there because all people were doing were grabbing any available screen to watch France's opening match in the World Cup. I wish they hadn't seen that. Right? And there was a, a, obviously a huge disappointment here with France losing, the defending champions playing the opening match, losing to Senegal. The Champs-Élysées last night, all night, was a party. There was a huge colony of people from Senegal who live here in Paris. How do and you know that? So, because I, I was you I there was, all night. I <laughs> was invited to join and <laughs> declined. <laughs> I mean, it was an amazing scene, and it does, for an American, give you an idea of what the rest of the world thinks of the World Cup. We don't necessarily hold it in the same in the same. Well, regard. after the United States wins it this mm -hmm. year, we'll start ah, to ah, okay. see early pick McEnroe. Now, who do you think worked hard at that point? 
And you can see the youthful Robredo's frustration as this sails long. Well, it was a makeable Call shot. Mm -hmm. It's good to see that he's into it. Mm -hmm. No problem with that. Matter of fact, I wholeheartedly right. endorse that. He's got plenty of extra ones. He's bad. Oh. Oh. to play that hard and lose that point, as you said. Is this sort of like a baptism for a tennis player the first time you play Agassi? It, it's, it's like I said a couple of games ago. You can't prepare for it. Mm -hmm. You don't realize how difficult it is to deal with his, his ground strokes and how early he takes the ball and he's, how much you're moving. What other player do you know that plays mm -hmm. right there? Uh, oh, your, your favorite, Rios, did some oh. of that. Agassi. Rios, who is not here. When he shows up to play. Yeah, All right, here's our app like trivia question today, something that Andre Agassi would like to hold up uh, part of the bargain on with one of the American women. I ask you, when was the last time one country swept both singles titles in Roland Garros? I'll give you the answer shortly. It's not been a Good first week for the American men. Pete Sampras out quickly on the first day. Andy Roddick out quickly to a tough competitor in Wayne Arthurs from Australia. James Blake won around and then had a terrific match with Sebastian Grosjean. And that is way too good. Right, let's look at the American men. And you can see Michael yeah, Chang fall. continuing to play. Michael Russell, who was, what a story he was here last year, holding a match point against Kirtan out in the first round. <laughs> and most amazing, the only other American man standing alongside Agassi, Vince Spadia. Well, it, it, it's, it's, it's actually... Uh, inspiring mm -hmm. for those guys struggling in the the minor leagues because a guy was in the top 20 and we we talked about his run a couple times i think 21 for straight first right. round losses won one round now i guess he here a couple break points dropped into 250 in the world you're talking about class a in baseball and he's worked his way back up into the top 100 now He'll have his hands filled with full with Grosjean, however. And Robredo saved one break point. Of course, the other element of that story, Vince Spadia now being coached by Pete oh, Fisher, who once upon a time was Pete Sampras' coach and has just been out after serving several years in prison. Strange. <laughs> Strange game, tennis, to say the least. Oh, I see he's also got over here, they yeah, nice enough that. to supply us with coaches, Carol Novacek, who was a top 10 player at one point, mm -hmm. apparently traveling with him. And I'm assuming Spadia's father's lurking about. <laughs> him, him and Justin Gimmelstab's dad, they, they went to the same college, <laughs> I think. show Spadia's run is, is how much more depth there is in the men's game, particularly when you get below 100. I guess he's probably a little fortunate he won that point. Mm -hmm. Another break point. Spadia should have never dropped as far as he had. 
Perhaps he shouldn't have been quite as high as he was. Maybe he'll find himself where he belongs now. But the other point, as you said, there is a road back. Forehand by Roberto saves his third break point. Well, that's by far the biggest shot he's hit in this match. And he is down he break point. He is way behind the baseline. And it's annoying when you're playing someone who totally mishits the previous ball. You hit the ball back nice mm -hmm. and deep, and then he can turn around and smack a winner. And that's the other part about Clay I just hate. Head. You see that Agassi slipped a little bit mm. on another surface. He would have had it. <laughs> Roberto's about to fall he, over. He's on a metronome. It's unbelievable. Andre Agassi was moving him like he was a human metronome. <laughs> One side or the other, the entire point. And the fans here in Paris so appreciative of that display of tennis. And Roberto needs oxygen. <laughs> no kidding. Montage, Agassi. Agassi's put the clock on him. Get him out there. Serve another ball. We've got about 10 seconds. Since it's, it's a fourth break point here, <laughs> Agassi's going to have. Somehow, I have a feeling that Roberto's going to put everything he's got into this serve to try to <laughs> win the point off the serve. Crowd has so much respect for Agassi. Just punishes his opponent. Roberto stalling for time as much as possible. This is where he should pull a cuchera. The toss, ah, the toss yeah. isn't quite right. Oh, it's just because yeah. of the last point. He double faults the game away, bouncing the racket, and Agassi is putting on a clinic early in this third round match. Our app like trivia question. The last time a country swept the singles titles at the French Open, not back as far as you would have thought. In fact, just four years ago, the Spaniards, Carlos Moya, and for Arancha Sanchez Vicario, her third title at Roland Garros. And dare I say last. <laughs> and she's pretty much called it a career after, after this event, I believe, especially after that result. A shocking first round loss. And Carlos Moya, had a terrific, I mean, one of the best matches I've seen here in years yesterday against Guillermo Cañas. Moya was up two sets to one. And Cañas came back to win. They played over four hours, and plus they had an hour delay. And they had to evacuate court one here with security concern. So the Spaniards, of course, have been so strong here for years. The Argentines are emerging this year at Roland Garros. Two already in the round of 16, a chance for three others. Well, here's Agassi against the Spaniards the last five times he's played them at Roland Garros, including his last match against David Sanchez. Well, we have
had a couple of guys from Argentina that could play back in my day. Vilas mm -hmm. and Clerk inspired these youngsters of today. And they're improving rapidly. Kanyas, one of those extremely fit guys, like a Vilas, who just, it, it looked to me in the fourth and fifth, that Moya fatigued. There's another young Argentine that some folks walking around this week have been buzzing about as a potential dark horse, Guillermo Correa. Correa is tough. Gaudio has is, is improved mm -hmm. quite a bit. That drops on the line. Well, it is interesting, John. I spoke with Chris about this during the Capriati match. That you know, the, you don't, don't seem to have as many clay court specialists, on, or we call them that, on the women's side. But you come here in the men's side and you see them. It's also guys, fitter guys that are tougher to beat in longer matches. That's more the point. the point. Finally, Robredo with a winner. Probably will not win this game anyway. Kirton is an example, a three-time winner. He's tougher to beat in a best of five set match. A lot of these guys. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot more energy. Ferrero, another one, if, if he remains healthy. Ferrero, Korea. Korea. That, that's an anticipated match on clay. Rojan, who we've talked about in the opening, is another guy tougher to beat in a longer match. Juan Carlos Ferrero is a name, and I guess he doesn't want to look too far ahead, but that's a name that... That's a potential quarterfinal. Right. Certainly would contend with. Semifinalist here in the last two years. If healthy will be a real test for Agassi because he's a clay quarter who likes to stand at the baseline as well. Maybe they have Spider-Man coming out, premiering here on Tuesday. Maybe they have Mosquito Man. He's That's right. So we've got to get, our, before I pass away on this earth, we have to have a tennis movie that's good. Something to do with tennis that actually mm -hmm. looks like they're playing. Where the players look legitimate, you say. Yeah, so it yeah, might start with to. getting a player who can act. Mm -hmm. That might help. That's the key. Any candidates in mind? Oh, oh. <laughs> Glad oh, you asked. Right. <laughs> Right now, Robredo has reached the moment of truth. A break point here that would pretty much sew up the second yeah. set for Agassi. It's one thing to lose a point like that 30-shot rally in the last game. That, Robredo can do without. That's really what's getting him here. That was a giveaway. That's this. That shot gives Andre break point to get up two breaks. That's two sets gone if that happens. Just in the Oh, how beautiful is that? Andre Agassi. He is in top form on this beautiful Saturday afternoon in Paris. Andre Agassi about ready to serve for the second set. And the overhead camera <laughs> suspended on some wires stopped right at top of Andre. And the wind definitely kicked up too, which has made it tricky. Zero counts. 
That is an overhead television camera used by French television here. And is that the shadow from the that's camera? That's the shadow that's from the camera. Yeah. Shot right over <laughs> Andre's shoulder. He's not, that's not going to go over too well if he loses surf here. Or even if he wins, I have a feeling. It makes no sense for it to be there. Well left. And now the there cameras <laughs> leaving the premises. I'm surprised it didn't have a sponsor's mm -hmm. name on it, too. What do you think, John? If, if Agassi made a final here against a Frenchman, which way would the crowd go? That's in. That drops in. Now, you know the French crowds well enough to know it would be the Frenchmen. See, they give Agassi a lot of applause in the beginning. And right. Appreciate, give him the respect he deserves, appreciate what he's capable mm -hmm. of doing, and then at the end of the day, they'd like to see him fold like an accordion. Which is what we saw against... He led right back crowd went against Grosjean last year. Which, which there's another great shot from Robredo, and believe it or not, Teddy's got a couple break points here. Which is why he should be hitting himself on the head about right. losing serve the last game. Oh, an aggressive play here by Robredo, and it pays off. So he gets one break back. Short one if out, see play. Well, next Saturday on NBC, we'll have the women's final here from Roland Garros, and then the final leg of the Visa Triple Crown, the Belmont Stakes from New York. War Emblem looking to capture the greatest prize in racing, the Visa Triple Crown, next Saturday, the Belmont Stakes here on NBC. He's like Agassi, Warren, isn't he? A front run. Goes right out to the front, can't get him. Two down. Lots of action coming up in the New York in June, Belmont Stakes, and then later in the month, the U.S. Open Golf Championship, which we'll see here on NBC from Long Island. And the NBA Finals are going to take place. Can you, as a Knicks season ticket holder, can you believe that? The New Jersey how bad, Nets how the, how bad the Knicks are. Yeah. <laughs> They're fun to watch. Kids got about as much energy as mm -hmm. anyone I've ever seen. Uh, professional athlete. Just, he's like a Duracell battery. He just keeps on ticking. My address, Duracell, by the way, is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Robredo, look at this. Got to try to put the onus back on Andre to serve the set out. Well, it is almost impossible to go through an entire match on clay without mm -hmm. losing rhythm or concentration briefly. And this is it for Andre. Well, there it is. So, I guess he will sit, pause, and then try for a second time to take a two-set lead. Most everything the same for Andre Agassi this year. One big change. A new coach after a long partnership with Brad Gilbert. Andre Agassi joining forces with former Aussie Tour player Darren Cahill, who had been Leighton Hewitt's coach. Little psychological warfare going on there. Picking Hewitt's coach up to a few months ago. So nothing's changed for Agassi. New coach, new baby. Mm -hmm. it's, sounds like a couple big moves. He does not want to dump serve here again. Give this guy some hope. Two poor games from Agassi.
Andre again, making Robredo run. And now Robredo's got some answers. Well, he should have put that volley away. He got tentative, and he just He's gave Robredo a chance. That volley just sat there, and Robredo took advantage. This is highly surprising. That's it. Oh, oh and then Robredo has got that spring for the first time. Steps into the serve, takes it on the rise, like Agassi does. And now the crowd realizing it's Agassi who's in a bit of trouble here. Completely lost his way. Three points to level the set. That's why you love and hate Clay at the same moment. not known for his clay court prowess so you just I'll just sit here mm -hmm. you just do your thing but a good guy to have around <laughs> well he's saved two and John it seems like Andre's oh, unwavering in one thing even if he goes down he's going to make that kid run back and forth and will pay dividends even if he does right. dump this set which I still don't believe he will, but he certainly made it competitive. Robredo's got to respect that angle, Ted Cross Court. Agassi is one of the few guys, again, who can take a ball up high, hit it flat with pace. It's extremely tough to deal with that shot. Now back to Deuce. Oh. Uh, that ball clipped the line. I want uh, Agassi. Biggest serve of the match for Agassi Ooh. right there. Well, the Porsche speed gun at 117. Robredo went up to check to be sure, and it did indeed flip the line. So now set point. from Love 40 and hold serve to take a two-set lead here in this third round match. Well, joining us again, as always, Bud Collins. And Bud has a, more on this interesting first week for the American men at Roland Garros. Clearly the rookie of this year is the Connecticut Yankee, James Blake. He almost beat the top Frenchman, Sebastian Grosjean, in the second round. And it was only his eighth match on European clay. Traditionally, a minefield for American guys. James spent two years at Harvard, but nobody in the locker room for a high school diploma is a rarity, holds it against him. There's a lot to like about him. His forehand, his speed, his wonderful nature, and of course, his hair that defies the laws of gravity. Obviously, I'm jealous. The most startling player has been Floridian Vinny Spadia, fighting his way through two five-set matches into the third round. Formerly a top 20 player, he took a free fall into the Bush League to number 240, where he said to himself, I've got to get a real job or a real life. He didn't like it. So he fought some more. A lot of grit and moxie up to number 88 and into the French Open. One of his Italian ancestors, Julius Caesar, said, Danny Vidi Vinci, I came, I saw, I conquered. If he could have seen Spadia, he would have declared, Vinny, Vinny, Vinny! 
Two sets for Agassi over Robredo, despite the low first serve percentage. Four breaks of serve for Andre, and of course the two had a magnificent 33 hit point during that second set. Clips the outside of the line. I'd like to see Robredo go for a bigger serve. Now, I'm not sure he's capable of that. And he's more or less is spinning the serve mm -hmm. in against the world's greatest returner, which may explain why he's down two sets to love. Want to take a quick look here, says Agassi. Andreas Egli, chair umpire. Now, Robredo says, everyone tells me I need to get bigger. I need to be more like an American player. Bigger and stronger up top. But I think you hit it, John. If you want to look at anyone for inspiration, look at Guga. Well, people may forget, though, that Guga's 6'3". Mm -hmm. He wins a lot of free points on his serve. He's got a big first serve, and he covers more ground than Robredo. Robredo needs to develop this serve. And it will hurt him even more so on a faster surface. He's on a good little run now, man. He's playing the best by far he's played in this match. It's like what I said before. If he hadn't lost that second break, he still might be out here playing the second set, perhaps be headed towards a tie break. So Robredo, showing no signs of a letdown, comes out, easily holds to begin the third. Andre Agassi, I believe now 12 years ago, his first march through to the finals of Roland Garros, back-to-back -back finals, and then most unexpectedly winning one of two matches that he's, and now reflecting on his career, says were the most meaningful. His win here in 99, and his Olympic gold medal in Atlanta in 96. win here in 99, John, Andre had gone down to the challenger circuit to try to rebuild his game. Now, you know who he beat in 96 in the Olympics, right? You're one of your favorites. Sergi Bruguera. Huh. Sergi, a silver medalist on hard courts. Just retired. <laughs> Official for the fourth <laughs> time. <laughs> Was that in the first round match or uh, <laughs> before the tournament? Definitely tricky serving out there. That's quite windy. And you know? see that toss way too low. Both players struggling. You know, watching Andre play, John, and how he's developed here on clay. After another year where Pete Sampras put effort in. Hired Jose Higueras to try to get him pre better prepared for Clay losing the first round. Why has Andre thrived here and, and Samper's never been able to do it here? First, first, Agassi holds one all. First of all, he doesn't like to serve in ball. You see him stay back on grass. So that, that is, is better, not serving and volleying is, is, is much easier on this surface. Mm -hmm. 
which Sampras likes to win a lot of free points. And Agassi is, when, when he's worked at it, has always been the fitter of the two players. That is a big factor. And if you watch his, his, his strokes when he plays, they're very compact. And he likes to stand at the baseline. He sees the ball earlier than virtually anyone in the game. And so he's inevitably making you run more, mm -hmm. which pays dividends down the road. And his mentality is, uh, is, is better suited to this type of surface. He played more on it, too, as a kid. I'm Sampras, growing up in California, did not play a great deal of clay court tennis. Robredo has find, found himself a comfort level. Let's see if he can make a real match out of this. Take this to a four set. Man. Hey, he's in games. He's won two games on his serve at love to begin the third set. The extremes of this first week at Paris. It began with everyone bundled up against the cold and the rain, and now by the weekend, after only an hour and 18 minutes, players are dousing their heads. Welcome to Paris. Yep. There's a look at Robredo. You can see has done well to already rise to 29 in the rank. Reached the round of 16 here last year, the first time he ever played the main draw. 2000, here two years ago, Robredo was the Runner up in the juniors. Lost to a Frenchman, Paul Henri Matthew. Matthew, by the way, is up on Yuri Novak a couple of sets and will play the winner of this match mm -hmm. if he were to get by. Well, I would give the Frenchman. See, that would be an interesting match for the French crowd. And right. then you've got Grosjean. See, your finals won't happen. There's no Frenchman left over there. Round of 16 semis would be sufficient for them. Well, the French crowd here was disappointed last night as we see out there again. Late to the evening last night, Arnaud Clement looked like he was going to come back from two sets down and beat Alex Carreccia, the two-time finalist here. Clement actually had a match point. Four, four match points. Four actually. match points, and Karech should survive. One eight six in the fifth. Agassi once again showing that ability to flatten the ball out if necessary. Pick it up high with that heavy topspin. He can slice it, or when he sees the opening like there, just flattens it out, smacks it away for a winner. This is a great forehand returns. Taking a page out of Andre's book, yeah, stepping in, taking it early, hurting Agassi off the return. There's no question that's his best and probably only chance is to get ahead in the point so he doesn't have to run so much. what happens yeah. if he gets behind. And more running for Robredo. And a hold for Agassi for two all here yeah, in the fine. third set. Tomorrow we're back for our second day of coverage from Roland Garros once again at 3 Eastern. And tomorrow all of the ladies will play the entire round of 16. So the Williams and Jennifer Capriati all in action tomorrow 3 Eastern here on NBC.
in the top half of the men's round of 16 will play tomorrow. Guga will be in action. Top seed, number mm -hmm. one player, Leighton Hewitt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like uh, Rio Sachan. Little flare. Totally unnecessary. Off but the table. Sort of looks good, mm -hmm. especially when it goes in. That's the first Hall point that Agassi has won on Robredo's serve in this set. He was in a position in that point where he, any coach or pretty much anyone would tell you not to be when he hit that back and he decided not to come in. He stood right between the service line and the baseline and still he won the point. So the coach says nothing, right? He doesn't say anything even when he's doing <laughs> the right thing. Looks out and he said a second ago he hadn't won a wow. point on his serve. Now he's got a break point, just like that. That's too good. Suddenly, four points like a bolt for Agassi. And now firmly in command. Two sets and a break in the third. Now we mentioned how Andre Agassi holds so dear his French Open Championship, won here in 1999 earlier this week. Bud Collins asked Andre about that win. memories here are ones that have changed my my career I mean to win all of them was um, closure in a sense it was me knowing that that day I'll never have another regret in my career which is an incredible blessed thing to be able to say so uh, so it's it's very special it was probably the most special moment I've ever had on the court came here and yet he perseveres on three years later trying for another one Takes the pressure off. He's won all of them. He's always got that in his back pocket. And that's going to pass inspection, as they say. Mm -hmm. Pass the audition. Seven slams. So many other close ones. And, you know, we watched John last September, a match we referenced earlier when he played Sampras in the quarterfinals of the Open. One of the highest quality tennis matches you'll ever see anywhere. Point being that although people see that he didn't win a slam last, they said, well, look at the caliber of tennis that he played. Andre first won in Australia to begin last year and then had the Three matches we referred to earlier. Oh, look at Robredo again, pouncing with that forehand. Robredo, to his credit, bounces right back here. There's not much on this Agassi serve, and he's definitely found a shot that he's hit consistently the last half hour or so, and that's the forehand return. The 
and it's a good a good idea of Andre. Go to the backhand first of two break points. I suspect you'll see him kick one out to the backhand again, try to get himself out of trouble. Oh, yeah. I guess he used to be a player just like to pound, pound away. That, this point illustrates. Look how far off the court Robredo is. That's, it's that angle. That's another shot that you, you would never be taught in a, in a practice session. But he saw Robredo on the mm -hmm. run, and all he had to do was just push the ball the other side. It wasn't pretty, but it sure worked. Oh. And by the way, it was exactly what he meant to do. Andre, very finicky about where those ball boys end up. Some back in place, where they started. Where Bredo is going to have nightmares about these break points. Agassi holds serve right here and finishes. That's that's if he's not up cramping <laughs> from from all the running he's done. Three break points. Agassi saved to win the second set. He just saved two in this game. We're going to have two games away. Well, tomorrow, we'll be back here, of course, at 3 Eastern with more French Open tennis action. And tomorrow night, Game 7, Lakers and Kings from what will be a wild Arco Arena in Sacramento. 7 Eastern tomorrow night here on NBC. is where you better believe Agassi's going to try to finish him off, get that second break, a little insurance. That's two brick-like points to love 30 for Robredo. This match only an hour and a half long. There's another gift. He started the set as if he meant on putting those first two sets behind him. Now he's just having a meltdown. Time to the fountain of youth, but now one game away from an impressive win. Andre Agassi about ready to make the round of 16 three years ago here. Agassi, who had been a runner-up twice in the early 90s. That couldn't be three years ago then. Got back to the finals here <laughs> three years ago. Remember Andre Medvedev, what's happened to him? Where is he? Well, three years ago with those shorts, he had was in the finals and actually took a two-set lead over Andre. He only had one pair of shorts. That was the problem. Well, the Ukrainian could not finish it. Agassi came back from the two-set deficit, won the French Open, and that put him in the company of Fudge, Perry, Emerson, and Labor, the greats of the game, a rare career Grand Slam. Right now, Tommy Robredo 
has been taking one from the professor. He got a reality check mm -hmm. today. Back to the drawing board. Or the weight room. He's also, believe it or not, for a Spanish player, too impatient. He's given away way too many points. Worked out just the way Agassi would have hoped. Not on the court too long. He, he did get a, a delay because of the poor weather the first few days. So he's played a Wednesday, Thursday, now Saturday. Let's give him time to get those legs back in gear for Monday. Say goodbye to Robredo. Lesson delivered. Put the Tommy record on. He just ran into the tennis wizard, didn't he? <laughs> six two, six four, six two, an hour thirty-four. I mean, that's as thorough and impressive a win. And this is why you wonder. Andre Agassi may indeed play a young French in the next round, but these people love him. Wow. They've loved him for a long time, Ted, and he's 